All right, so today I want to show you something that's got me out of a lot of binds. This is going to be called a boot stitch. And I learned this in the mountains about 15 years ago, and it has saved me many times since. Uh, what I have in my hand right here is a jerk needle, and I've installed it into an awl. And this is the same needle I've been using for about 15 years now. I also have some really, really heavy wax thread. You want quite a bit of that stuff because you'll go through it. But check out that needle. Uh, Tandy sells the needle in different sizes. This is probably about an 8 or 9. Bigger is usually better. And mine has a blade. If you can see right there on the tip, I've sharpened it. And that has helped me out quite a bit as well. So with these two items, I have repaired countless, countless packs, tack. I've re-sewn in, in entire boots within a matter of minutes. Uh, it's very quick, it's very easy, and so much better than those easy stitchers I see all over the place. Don't even worry with them. You need to make something like this. I swear by it. So what I'm going to do today is show you. Uh, I've got this old Bowie knife that was uh, old great uncle's. And since then I've had to, to remake a sheath, and I did it quite hastily many years ago. And in doing so, I used my machine on it, and the machine was messing up, getting too tight. And the leather machine that I had sewing didn't do a very good job stitching. I also, in my haste, didn't put a bumper in the front. So what happened over, over a matter of uh, months was that the sharpness of my blade cut through the tip here. And so what I'm going to do is I've taken and gotten a piece of this leather and cut it out. And I'm going to be splicing it in, in the middle, and sandwiching it just like that. And it looks, it looks off colored right now. It'll oil up, but that'll keep my blade from getting to the stitches as easily. So one of those things, whenever you're making custom knife, knife sheaths or any of your own custom gear, you're going to find that eh, what you thought might work doesn't always work. And you always got to try it out a few times before you figure out exactly what's, what does work and what doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down real fast. Uh, I'm going to take the string wax thread. I apologize for the sound back here, but we're out here in the oil field, and even on the weekend, you can hear the uh, the oil trucks going for miles. We'll string out quite a few feet. That's one thing is a uh, wax wax thread. As long as uh, as long as you have plenty of it, you might as well use it up because you don't want to get down to the last in couple inches of your project and run out. Okay, and uh, the great thing about this is doesn't go bad. You squish it down, it's good to go again. And uh, that wax thread's probably been in my saddlebags for, let's say since 06, at least. So, here you go. Now I've pulled out half the stitches starting out. I don't want to take them all out because since I'm doing repair work, I want to, to line up the holes. And I'm going to cheat by using some of the same holes on this one. But I do sharpen the end of this blade with a uh, with a knife sharpener so it'll go through you and uh, funny story dad borrowed my gear and uh, well they got it out of his hand without cu cutting it off um, he he uh, he actually made it to the hospital with this thing jabbed through his hand because he borrowed it and no joke I was already at the hospital because I was getting stitches for cutting my thumb open so I thought he was visiting me but really and truly, he had this stuck in him. So, yay family. So what I'm gonna do uh, to start out with is go through the top hole, and it doesn't matter whether you go through the top or the bottom, and I'm gonna guide that in there and find my initial hole. And if you can't quite find it, well, by golly, this thing's sharp enough where it'll, it'll make it happen anyway. But I'm gonna go ahead and take that hole that I have and use it. And the great thing is, is that this thing is so thick that it's almost impossible for me to break this thing moving it around. With the quick stitchers you buy, they'll snap off, they'll break. You can't abuse them like you can this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and notice how I'm holding this thread. It's tight. Put it into the groove. Using my thumb, pull out. Now, this might take you a while at first to figure out, but you can get really fast at this. 
Alright, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and string this out. Alright. And depending on how you want to do your stitch, after a while, what you'll do is you'll get really good at figuring out what the long end is and what the short end is. Okay. And so the long end is going to be on top for mine. And what that means is I'm going to be pulling, pulling, pulling the thread down through. I want to have just a little bit more thread come off the top than thread that's coming out of the bottom. See that? Shorter thread on the bottom, longer thread on top, and I've got it sandwiched just like that. Okay. You ready? Now you can do this either way. What I'm going to go ahead and do is from the back side. Okay. I'm going to pull this in from the back side to start stitching it. So as I find holes, go ahead, make sure your hand isn't in there. I twist it to get it where I want to go. These first couple are kind of uh, kind of warped. They'll do that. I take it, and I loop it. Pull tight, push back with your thumb. And all I've done is make a loop right there. Okay, you seeing that? All right, I'll do this quite a few more times to show you. I'm gonna pull my my long strand out from the bottom, or my short strand out from the bottom. Go through the loop. I'm simply going to pull back up on that. And what it's gonna do is sandwich those two pieces together. All right, now. Your top side is a showpiece, and really what I want to do is seat where it's junctions together somewhere in the middle. So you don't see the splice right there, you don't see it right there, they're both hidden. And I'm going to repeat. So I'm back at the very beginning again, one strand out each way. Go ahead and try and find the hole once more. Go ahead and guide it on up there. Take it, loop it, tighten it on, push, pull, all that good stuff. Here's your loop. You simply take your string, pull it up through the loop, and pull it back once more. After a while, I won't have to pull both sides. Just one side will work real well. And there you go. And we keep on going all the way through all the way down so we'll find a hole and the next one it's not really helping me out too much we'll go on up tight pull back i'm always twisting nope over sometimes you'll get really good and just just like that and you're good and I go all the way down through here I'm gonna we'll restitch this whole thing because it's good um, one of the great things about using the wax thread also is that uh, unlike the thread that I use in my machine the wax tends to preserve a lot longer it's also a thicker thread so anytime I'm using something I'm gonna have to use out in the field or I'm gonna make it durable you know, the, the machine's nice to use, but in the end, if it's my own gear, I'm going to come back and do it with this every time. So, we're going to go ahead and do this a few more times, finding the hole, stitching it up, putting this whole thing back together. And uh, we'll show you the finished product after a while. That's your boot stitch. Alright, well, I'm down to the portion where I want to go ahead and put this in. So, I've stitched up to it, pull it apart, see if I can't wedge it. And this is where you kind of get to see how sharp this thing is. Okay, so it goes right in there. The rest of what I've done has its own holes. What I just put in there doesn't have holes. And uh, that's the usual, not having holes. Uh, on the trail, kind of made my own gear and I cut the leather right there I always kept spare leather and this guy on hand you want to buy this thing 
Uh, you can use any kind of thread. You can use sinew. You can go and pull twine through with it. You can't do that with the Easy Stitcher. You want to have this. Make one. Ask me questions, guys. So, looks like I got one last hole right here. I can go ahead and throw it through. Same stitch. Always the same stitch. And pull it through. And you'll get faster and faster at this thing. And it might poke out a little bit. You can always sand it down. Notice that it's not lining up. Not like it did on this one. I'll go and I'll bevel that and push it up against something and uh, go ahead and push it down again. No worries. It's just going to look like that. It's a repair job. So here we go. Just like before. Come down through. I'm going to go ahead and twist the needle as I do this. You do not want to put your hand in the way. A lot of times I've had new people take cardboard and push it there in, in front of it. Get it to go through. Easily pushing, adding pressure, at the same time twisting. And it should find its way all the way through. Pull it. And again, this needle does not care how thick that, that leather is. It's not going to snap off have to worry about it. The only issue you have with this needle is, uh, again, self-impalement. Eh, keep it sharp too. So there we go. Going through. Yep. So that's how much I know, right? Going up through the hole. That is your boot stitch, guys. This is how I do all my saddlebags, the repair on all my tack, and this is how I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this old knife sheath. I do note that I'm going to have to go ahead and put a, a, a strap over here. I know I'll probably get comments on that. There's the old Bowie knife again, given by my great uncle, and kind of just call it the neck chopper. It's always been around. Not the most efficient blade, but it works well. So snug in on in there. There you go. Okay, I'll finish it up and uh, makes a good blade. But check out that stitching. Like and subscribe. Take care, guys.